I think he turned out this book, uh, the the Red Diary, Diary. the Army Commander's uh, Red Diary, and then the other books that he has written are uh, are are these, and these are of course not all the books that Prem Bhagat wrote. There was uh, there were other books that he wrote to confirm the fact that here was not just somebody who was winning the Victoria Cross, but also had all the intellect to write these kind of books. Now, uh, the, when he was in Northern Command, um, BK, um, what uh, was the highlight of that period? No, the highlight of that period, one that I mentioned, you know, he had a propensity to get things done and go through red tape. And the only people who used to be unhappy are the auditors, as you know. <laughs> the officer's accommodation in Udhampur today exists only because of General Bhagat. As you know, after the 71 war, there was a financial stringency and all new works were stopped. And anything which has not reached roof level was also stopped. And this thing had just been started. Even the land has not been acquired. In fact, that audit objection still stands in the books of the auditors. So he was told, sir, we'll have to stop the construction. He says, no, I will sign the certificate. Nobody has the gumption to tell an army commander that he's lying. Right, and I recall, and, that. and I recall as a battalion commander in Northern Command in Kargil, when Prem Bhagat was the army commander, he would come uh, to the unit and wherever he men, went, he treated the battalion commander as God. Yes. The, there was nobody bigger than the battalion commander for him. And I remember at a war game where a battalion commander said something which was contrary to what the official line was. He went and patted that battalion commander and he said, this is what I expect not to follow the party line, but come out, think out of the box. And that was uh, Prem Bhagat. But one other contribution, Jan Sena sir, was just before he became the army commander, was the delineation of the line of control with General Hamid Khan. What do you remember about that? Yeah. He delineated the ceasefire line, which is now called line of control and which I had worked on in 1949 as Secretary of the Indian Delegation to the UN Conference. And there were certain parameters, change parameters, on the basis of which this was done. Except for one place, I think I'm forgetting the name, Tatagar or some line, place like that, which was disputed because it was both on the international border and also on the line of control. And as a divisional commander, Thakuchak was in my sector later. And that was sorted out very interestingly at Lahore between General Manikshaw then and the Pakistan Army Chief. And on the light of vain, I may mention that at the conference, the Pakistan Army Chief, who had risen from the ranks much junior to um, Manik Shaw, he said, reading from a paper prepared by his staff, we have three alternatives. Sam Manik Shaw stopped him and said, Tika, yes, yeah, it was Tika Khan. Tika Khan your staff officer writes bad English. <laughs> it's either two alternatives or three courses. <laughs> well, the result of the line of control, uh, um, these were nine rounds of talks alternating between uh, Suchetgarh and Vaga. And uh, during these talks, uh, after these talks, they, they got Finally, the, uh, the agreement on the line of control, Prem Bhagat signs it, Hamid Khan signs it, and here is 
that document and why this is important is we all know that the line of control is being violated day in and day out today and that is something that goes back to the Simla agreement and to the delineation of the line of control which as General Sinha said was a process which culminated with General Manning Shaw actually clinching the issue. Now the, the, the last bit uh, is the Damodar Valley Corporation. After uh, General Bhagat retired, he was moved by Mrs. Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister then, to Damodar Valley Corporation, which was a dying, decaying organization, and he infused a breath of new life. Uh, what do you recall about that VK? Uh, yeah, when General Bhagat went in July, he was still serving as an army commander. I mean, a Lieutenant General, and he went in uniform. It is only a month later, 31st August, that he formally retired from the army. But what he did in DVC in those 10 months was a miracle. And the, uh, I mean, the results were there within two, three months. In the first month, the output was increased from 45 megawatts to 85. And after two months, it reached 700 megawatts. That is an increase of 15 times. And then he held a conference of all the major industry leaders. He said, I've got surplus power. Why aren't you people taking power from me? And they got the shock of the lives uh, because they had, had been uh, you know, grappling with power shortage. And for so there was this miraculous transformation, miraculous transformation into a dynamic power house. Absolutely. Uh, we are coming to the close of this discussion, uh, Ashi. Hmm. Your father died under very uh, tragic circumstances. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember about that? Very briefly. Okay. Uh, basically, he had a bad throat. He just met uh, uh, KC Pant in Delhi. He flew back, and he was his his fever became pretty high. So we took him to the military hospital, and the uh, colonel of the military hospital, Colonel Subramaniam insisted that he give him penicillin, even though we told him he's highly allergic to penicillin. Unfortunately, he had a horrible reaction and went into a kind of anaphylactic shock. He fought it for two weeks, but in the end, he passed away. He passed away. Uh, well, uh, before we, we wrap up this program, uh, what is it that you remember uh, about Prem Bhagat? I'll start with you, VK. So, so he, I mean, he was still serving as an army commander and central command and northern command when I was a major. And they are, you know, uh, those So, days, what is that one thing, very quickly? That I, I, I remember the, the, that incident which really, you know, uh, impressed me directly was he came to Mao, we were doing the degree course, nobody had family accommodation. He addressed all of us and people raised this point. He says, in three months you will get accommodation. And you did? He made tented accommodation in three months, and everybody got his family. Ashi, what do you? I thought I, as a daughter, of course, I adored him, and I thought it was only me. But when I was writing the book, I came across people from all walks of life, even civilians, who really admired and respected and loved him. And 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 indeed, that was the case. Channel Sena, sir, what well, is your? How would you remember? Uh, I Prima remember him as. Uh, one of the greatest of the great generals of the Indian Army. And I also have a sense of guilt in relation to him. When he was lying desperately ill in Calcutta, I was director of military intelligence. A particular medicine had to be brought from UK. And I rang up the military attaché in London to send it. He sent it, but unfortunately it was too late. Came too late. Well, I remember Prem Bhagat, the winner of the most outstanding citation for a Victoria Cross. He died at the young age of 56. Tomorrow, he would have been 96 years old and still dismissing his extraordinary courage and valor in the minefields with, oh, that was nothing. To that great soldier and military leader, Prem Bhagat, we can all wish happy birthday, Prem, 
and as he used to so fondly chant, Sat Sri Akal. That's all for now. Thanks for defense watching. Till same time next Sunday when we bring you another illustrious son of India, the great military leader. Goodbye and Namaskar.